What's up, EO Hackers? Welcome to the C.S. Joseph Podcast. I'm your host, C.S. Joseph. Welcome back to one of my favorite filming spots. Let's see what happens over here. <laughs> it's always interesting where I start filming. People are just like, what the hell is that guy doing? You know, but I really don't care. Sometimes it facilitates some of the coolest conversations, though. And uh, I'm very thankful for uh, the proprietor here for giving me the permission to actually film here. It's very nice of them. And as long as I'm not disturbing their customers, which doesn't happen very often, <laughs> uh, then, it's, uh, then it's pretty good. It works out great. So today's question is, uh, hi, I'm an INFP woman and I've just hit the wall. What do? <laughs> what do I do? Like, dang, what a question. What a question. Yeah, good question, though. Very good question. That sucks. You've hit the wall. What is the wall? What is the wall? Let's, like, add, let's actually like answer that question first. Like, what is the wall? So the wall is basically that you as a woman have your past epiphany phase. Epiphany phase usually happens about 25, 26, 27 years old, where you as a woman realize that your looks can no longer compete with younger girls anymore. Which means that you had access to really good men or the greatest, the highest quality men in your life, and all of a sudden you start losing access to those men because, um, you know, more gorgeous uh, women are gaining access to them instead of you. That really sucks. But then, Let's say that you had your epiphany phase and you weren't able to land a guy, basically. You weren't able to get a, a really good husband and now you're hit, you've hit the wall. The wall happens when a woman hits about 30, 30, 31. The reason why is because at 31 especially, and this is statistically proven, you can look this up, a woman's, a woman's uh, fertility drops 20% year after year starting at age 31, which is really bad, really, really bad. She ages faster. She cannot produce as high quality or as, he as healthy children. Usually has to have children with assistance of some kind. And it's especially bad for women who have had the COVID vaccine and boosters uh, because they actually end up hitting the wall faster. Um, and, you know, this is obviously my opinion, just stuff that I've observed, uh, that I've observed uh, throughout my life, uh, especially since, you know, the COVID situation happens and whatnot. But women who end up taking the vaccine end up losing their fertility sooner. They hit the wall sooner, basically. Sooner than that typical age 31 within the United States of America. Now, you've got to take that with a grain of salt because the United States of America is already a really toxic society. And everything in Western society is so toxic. And it's built around bringing down women's fertility anyway, right? As much as it is destroying a sperm count which can also suck and that can be a huge problem. So based on that, you as a woman need to be equipped on how to deal with that particular situation. On top of like, if you're ever on hormone birth control, which what the hell are you doing in your life? Do not be on hormone birth control. Are you crazy? Like, do you want to give yourself breast cancer? Do you want to, do you want to age yourself faster? Like it's really, really not good. If you want to get off hormone birth control, buy yourselves an aura ring, O-U-R-A ring.com. Check it out. Get yourself an aura ring and then combine that with another app called Nature Cycles and then use that as your birth control. Basically, technologically enables you to use the calendar method, also known as the rhythm method, perfectly. And the app will just tell you which days to use a condom and which days to not use a condom and you'll be completely safe and you don't have to worry about it. So that's how you can take charge of your fertility right away. And also any woman who is a member of the Eagle Hacker community, I highly, highly recommend you read the book, The Fifth Vital Sign, as soon as possible. And take everything that I've said so far at the beginning of this particular episode to make sure that you are maximizing your fertility as possible. 
uh, read uh, Food Rules by Dr. Catherine Shanahan, as well as her book, Deep Nutrition, as well. Combine those two books with The Fifth Vital Sign on top of the Aura Ring and the Nature Cycles, and you will have the basic foundation that you need to take control of your fertility and move it even forward, like more forward than that. So don't, don't take the vaccine. If you already have the vaccine, well, sucks to be you, but don't get any boosters. If you got the vaccine plus boosters, really, really sucks to be you. You should definitely take control of your life now while you still can. Uh, get pregnant sooner than later so that you actually still have an opportunity uh, to actually have a child. Please get that done because outside of that, you're at risk of being, um, you know, uh, what they call a leftover woman, a woman who ends up, you know, 40 years old, alone, and with just her cats and her dogs, with absolutely no one to take care of her in her old age, which for some reason, I don't know why that's not being talked about, especially like with society being on the verge of collapse. I don't know why female solipsism, which is a survival instinct, I don't know why it hasn't just like taken over women by storm, and I don't know why they aren't protesting in the streets when they should be protesting in the streets because society is not gonna be there for you in your old age. And if you have not produced children who will be taking care of you in your old age, you're basically screwed as a woman. You are basically screwed. And we all know how women care so much about their own personal survival because of their innate solipsism. Solipsism being a woman's penchant for being more entitled uh, throughout her life because she's more solipsistic than men. Men are more idealistic, still a little solipsistic, but more idealistic than women. Women are leaning hardcore into their solipsism, but that's necessary for the survival of the human race. I'm not judging, that's just how it has to be that way. Plus, a woman being more solipsistic means that her value, that, that her choice towards a man, her choosing a man has a lot more value. If she doesn't really have a choice, then there's not really much value. If she, if she doesn't have a choice over her man, there's not really much value in it, and there's not really a place for like, for example, for love to actually take place in that, uh, in that regard or within that situation. So part of protecting yourselves as women is that you need to have children so that you don't find yourself elderly with literally nobody in your life. Because I guarantee you statistically, the men in your life are gonna die before you do. So yeah, because women have a lot longer lifespans. So you really need to be thinking about these long-term consequences. You really need to be having children so you're not screwing yourself. You're not screwing yourself over when you're elderly. And I don't understand why these things are not being taught to women right now. It's probably because the elite doesn't really care and wants to reduce the population as much as possible and take women down with them. And women serve at the feet of society and serve at the feet of, of the elite because from their perspective, oh, well, society has enabled me to get a job and provide for myself. I don't need a man. Society will be always there to be protect me. I could just call 911. The police will always show up for me. Yeah, right. No, they won't. No, they won't. Society won't always be there for you. And what, you really think that child support, receiving child support too, with, you know, with the father of your children not being around anymore is actually going to help your children too? Do you think that's going to enable your children? Let's say you do have children, but you, they don't have their father around because maybe you are quarrelsome and disrespectful because it is written better to be in the corner of one's own roof than to be in a home with a quarrelsome and disrespectful woman, right? And, you know, if you don't even know how to be feminine with a man, because most women don't, uh, do you think he's going to stick around for you? And then let's say, so, so when he leaves, like, so let's say you do actually have children, right? But your man still leaves you. Your children are less likely to take care of you in your old age based on that because they didn't have their father in their life to teach them personal responsibility. So you're screwing yourself there too. Point is, it's really, it really sucks to be a woman right now in Western society. It really sucks. I don't recommend it. it. Really sucks. Because while everything seems so good when you're in your 20s and you can go get any job, you can be with any man, you know, you're hot, you're sexy, hot girl summer, all that stuff, guess what? That only lasts a couple of years and then it's over. And then you'll never have that back again. You'll never have that as a woman again. And it sucks. 
because you know women are born with value and they have to work their whole lives to preserve that value, right? Whereas men are born with no value and they have to work their whole lives to build that value. But if you weren't doing a good job preserving your value, all of a sudden you're an INFP woman who's hit the wall and you don't have any options anymore and you're screwed and then you're coming to me as an Acolyte member asking me this question, Chase, please help me, I don't know what to do. But there's hope for you, there is hope. First place of hope that I would recommend. On this channel, there is a season called Season 31. Season 31 is the most controversial pieces of content in a playlist that I've ever produced. I've received more hatred for this content than anything else, but it's just me telling the truth, as your father should have taught you, basically, as a woman. But most women don't want to accept the truth, and then they end up 40 and alone, or they end up elderly with within a, in an old folks home or worse uh, with no one there for them because they were sold a false bill of goods by society they were lied to these women were lied to and that sucks by the way to finish my previous point if you want to make yourselves more feminine as a woman we'll get to that in a moment we'll talk about that but what can you as a woman who has hit the wall as an infp woman do what can you do? First things first, you need to start reading. You need to start reading immediately. You need to like put all of your energy into reading right now. And here's the books that you need to read. You need to read Irresistibly Feminine by Zach Rohde immediately. R-O-E-D-D-E. -D -D -E. You really need to read that. Uh, it's available on Audible. If you need a free Audible account to get that book for free, I can get that for you right now. Go to csjoseph.life forward slash reading. Click on uh, create, uh, get a free Audible account, and then you'll get a free book. Get that book. Start listening to it immediately. Okay? Seriously, start listening to it. Being that you're an INFP, you have the ability to uh, read books and also and also like do menial tasks at the same time. So anytime you're like washing dishes or not doing very much, you should always be listening to an audiobook. Maximize that time as much as possible. It is super important. It is like required. Like seriously, it's a big deal. Get that done. Seriously, get it done. The next book you need to read is Worthy Woman by Zach Rohde. Okay. And we already talked about Fifth Vital Sign. We already talked about Catherine Shanahan's Deep Nutrition and her other book, Food Rules. Read those books right away. You need all those. Then after that, you need to uh, read the book Wife School by Julie Gordon as soon as possible. That helps you manage your solipsism as a woman. And since you're an INFP woman, you are the most or second most solipsistic of all of the women out there in terms of your own uh, penchant for being entitled, which is something that men don't like. And given that you've hit the wall, you haven't had a child, you have yet to have your rite of passage. Having a child, you know, having a man in your life and having a committed sexual relationship while simultaneously having a child is a woman's rite of passage because it teaches her femininity. It teaches her how to put tribe above self, which is idealism versus her basic innate solipsism, which is self above tribe, right? She has to learn to put others above her, right? In order to even be feminine, in order for her to even be beautiful enough to a man to be considered, okay? So the first things first, you gotta change your mind. You gotta get your mindset better than what it is. Mindset is ultimately everything. You gotta do it. Because if you don't have the proper mindset as a woman, you're not gonna get anywhere. So that's step one, reading. Get these books under your belt as soon as possible. That's step one. Step two, you need to, um, Step two, you need to uh, you need to get into a fitness program. Okay, if you you need to get My Fitness Pal, you need to be counting your calories, tracking your calories. A good place to start is a Legion Athletics Macronutrient Calculator. Put in your height, weight, and age on this macronutrient calculator. It'll tell you how many calories, grams of protein, fat, carbs that you need to be eating every day. Put that in your goals inside of My Fitness Pal. Buy yourself a food scale. Measure absolutely everything you eat and look at all the nutrition facts of your food, program that into your MyFitnessPal, or do the search on MyFitnessPal to see if they already have those foods in there. Just note that many food manufacturers, because of inflation, are changing their food labels, their nutrition facts labels, once every six months, or at least guaranteed once every year. That's a big deal, that they're changing their nutrition facts super quick. 
So the information that you find already in MyFitnessPal is likely to be inaccurate, so you have to verify. You have to read the label and compare it to what's in MyFitnessPal. If it's not accurate, recreate the food in MyFitnessPal and then put in your nutrition facts. Now, also get your step count up. You need to get eight to 10,000 steps in a day, okay? So, and then uh, after that, you could probably get a weightlifting program. I recommend the Kino Batty program from KinoBody.com, also known as Grego Gallagher, or the Built With Science beginner program at BuiltWithScience.com through Jeremy Ethier. Uh, both of them work. I think Jeremy Ethier's program is technically superior, technically, because it also does your food calculations in a more accurate way instead of relying on the, Lego, uh, the Legion, uh, Legion Athletics uh, macronutrient calculator. That way you'll start losing body weight and getting your weight to where you go. So now, but where should my weight actually be, Chase? Well, you have to review the Banner Health Ideal Weight Chart. Search Banner Health Ideal Weight Chart. I used to tell women, I used to tell them 20% body fat or less, but I'm no longer saying that. I'm no longer saying it. I realize that that's not actually a good baseline. A better baseline is to look at the banner health ideal weight chart and then you put in you know your gender and then go look at your height and, and then go look at the range that it gives you you need to be inside that range but you need to be <coughs> at or below the median in that range you know, so remember math class you know in middle school and or maybe even elementary school where you have to calculate the mean the median and the mode right well calculate the median basically and the median is basically the number that is in the middle of that range. You need to be at that number or below. So basically, you know, um, take the highest number of the range, subtract that, subtract the lowest number of that range that you get inside the Banner Health Ideal Weight Chart, okay? And then you have that number, and then you divide that number by two, and then you take that number, and then you subtract that from the highest number in that range, and then that is the median, okay? Once you know what your median is, that is your target weight that you should be at as a woman. You should be at or below the median, basically. That is the gold standard, Chase's gold standard, C.S. Joseph's gold standard for women in terms of where their weight should be. But if you, still, if you are a bit skinny fat, well, then you're gonna have to do body recomposition. And the best way to do that, again, is the Keno Batty program, according to Greg O'Gallagher, or the Built With Science Beginner Program. I think the Built With Science Beginner Program is better. Check that out as well. So now you're getting your physique improved. Obviously, now after you get your physique improved, you have to improve your wardrobe. So go improve your wardrobe. Uh, we have resources available. Um, Jolly on uh, the Discord server as well as Stephanie on the Discord server at uh, discord.gg forward slash ego hackers. If you're a woman, just direct message them right away and they'll be happy to help you. Just go talk to them. Get on the Discord server, have a conversation, help. I'm a woman who needs help with my wardrobe. They also do accountability for weight loss as well as various other tips. These women are available to help. We have worked very hard to create a support structure for women, especially women who are in this situation. If you're a woman who has hit the wall, for example, if you're a woman in epiphany phase and you need help and you don't, you don't have a man, you don't have children, you're just kind of like, your life is a mess, you know, make sure you do that. They'll also give you additional resources to read, like Being a Woman like by Dr. Tony Grant, which I also recommend you read as well, but not as important as the previous books that I gave you. So yeah, step one, get your mind right, read books. Step two, get your physique right. Step three, figure out wardrobe. Step four, do makeup, but I'm a guy, I don't really know anything about makeup, so... I'm not the best person to ask. So talk to Jolly, talk to Stephanie. They will assist you uh, on the Discord server and as well as some, any of the other women who are there as well because all the women are learning together and uh, can definitely give you support. That's what we're trying to do. Now I noticed that this particular video was not answering specifically for INFPs, but honestly like this, this, these answers would be the same that I'd give regardless of any type. So make sure you are following them to the letter, okay? Uh, we've had a few women who were very obese, you know, get on these programs and they've turned their life around and all of a sudden they're getting more male attention than they've ever had, even if they have hit the wall, right? 
and then uh, there's still a chance. There's still a chance, but you also have to look at you know potentially getting yourself in a situation where. Uh, you know, you have to protect your fertility and you have to look at gut health. So go to fixyourgut.com and learn about your gut health or improve your gut health as well. If you're um, also use Dr. Berg on YouTube uh, to learn about your fertility in ways that you can protect your fertility as well. Uh, watch out for H. pylori. If you have ulcers, or if you've ever had an ulcer in your life, you have H. pylori. Watch out for Epstein-Barr virus. If you've ever had mono, mono in your life, you have Epstein-Barr. That can also negatively impact your fertility. If your insulin's too high, you can give yourself polycystic ovarian syndrome. That's bad. Or endometriosis. That's also bad. Endometriosis basically means you can conceive a child, but you can't carry the child. PCOS means you can't conceive a child, but you can carry a child. So it's just like your ovaries being attacked versus your your uh, your, um, your uterus being attacked. Basically, it's just, it's horrible. So don't let that be you. Seriously, as a woman, don't let that be you. You've got to protect your fertility, okay? And that's the thing. You have to be willing to put in all this effort if you want to pull yourself out of this ditch or out of this hole that you got yourself into. And it may not be your fault that you got into it. Maybe you were conditioned this way. Maybe you were sold a false bill of goods by society. Maybe you were completely screwed over by your parents. Maybe you were gaslit by other women you know, who saw that you were more beautiful than they were so that in the break room, they would just hand you more sweets over and over and over again and you, you obliged and you had more sweets and then as a result, they eliminated competition by getting you fatter, basically. Like that happens all the time. You cannot take other women at what they say at their word because if they see you as competition, they will work to destroy you, basically, because they want to make sure that their sexual viability is better than yours so that they can get the higher value man while you can't, okay? And that happens all the time, okay? So yeah, I mean, like, look, just this is why I'm behaving, this is why I'm saying these things and behaving this way, because guess what? Like, you know, it's not like your daddy was there to tell you these things, so you got to come to me, right? So I have to be daddy now. So these are the things that, like, your father should have taught you, basically. These are the things that I'll be teaching my daughters, basically. These are the things that I teach women on the Discord server on a consistent basis. Although it's hilarious because oftentimes, you know, I get accused of, trying to get trying to get with these girls when it's not actually true and not a thing <laughs> but the reality of the situation is is that we're here to help we're here to help we're here to make the women in the ego hacker community the best possible women out there and as much as we're trying to make the men in the ego hacker community the best men out there Every member of the ego hacker community, we want them to be able to represent the ego hacker community properly, meaning that they are the highest value they could possibly be. So whatever we can do as a community to help people get to that point, we're going to do, we are committed to that because it is our mission to eliminate fatherlessness, okay? But part of eliminating fatherlessness is helping women become mothers, helping men become fathers and teaching them how to be high value men and women so that they actually stay together in their relationships so they can have better families and thus a better future. That way you are not that woman who wakes up one day realizing, oh crap, I'm 40, I'm a dog mom, uh, I don't have any man, any worthy man at all because I never treated myself worthy enough. And you'll learn this in the book, Worthy Woman. A man will not treat you as a worthy woman unless you treat yourself as a worthy woman. If you follow all my instructions that I provided in this video, you are basically, in effect, treating yourself as a worthy woman. Therefore, you will be worthy of a high value man. And then above all, after you've done all these things, remember the season 31 playlist, the most controversial playlist that I've produced here on YouTube and on the podcast, season 31 playlist, Watch every episode, no matter how painful it is, especially the episode titled, Is There Still Hope for Low Value Women? And the answer to that question is yes, but I want you to watch that specific video or listen to that specific podcast episode so you can learn how and why. Follow my advice and I guarantee you a way more successful outcome, literally a guarantee. I guarantee you a more successful outcome in your life. And that's literally a promise that you can bake on. You can take that to the bank. So. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching and listening, and I'll see you guys on the next episode.